W-O-V-U-L-P, Cleveland. Coming up on Open Door with Vince Robinson, motivational speaker Stephanie Ray Thompson on her new podcast, Hey Raymond, I Need to Talk, Jesse Ruffin Jr. on the Carolyn's Law Petition Initiative, and Wendell Fields, Executive Director and League Commissioner of B-Buzz Baseball. Open Door with Vince Robinson starts now. Grand Dawn in Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome to another edition of Open Door with Vince Robinson. My guest this morning is Stephanie Ray Thompson. She is a solution-based motivational speaker. She has a new podcast. It's called Hey Raymond. She's going to tell us all about it. But before we get to that, we'll just get a little background from Stephanie. Stephanie, how did you get into uh, being a motivational speaker? We'll start with that. Good afternoon, morning, and evening. Thank you so much for having me, Vince. I really appreciate this opportunity. I think that I honestly have always been doing this. I've, you know, been in a difficult situation a lot of the times, and I think the only way to, to do that is to look up. And when people are going through things, I think that we have to look at the the, the way out of it rather than going and looking downward. So what's that? It's motivation and it's motivational speaking. I've been on a stage, pulpits, and my whole life. So that's really what we've been and I've been doing. And so getting on a stage and talking to people has just been something that I've always loved doing. And why not allow that to translate into something that I get to do in on a professional level. Okay. Well, I'll be transparent with the audience as I usually am and just say that, you know, we have performed on the same stage a number of times. Uh, The most recent event was something that happened at Glen village uh, a few weeks ago. uh, And it was a great event. And my thanks to you for participating and lending what you had to offer in terms of conversation. It was obvious to me that you were connecting with the audience. Uh, So uh, there must be something of substance in in what you offer. Uh, So motivational speaking, you decided to do that along with some of the other things that you do. Uh, and you created this podcast. So give us the uh, background, the backstory about, hey, Raymond, I need to talk. So thank you. Raymond is my brother, was my brother, is my brother. My brother um, was killed back in 1996, but he, his presence is still with me. And I found that there have been a lot of people, I am a long haulers with COVID, And that's something that I've been really working to overcome some of the challenges that I'm still facing and going through. And working through that is there's people that just don't understand. And you need to talk about that. You need to kind of work through that. And otherwise, you'll fall down this abysmal path. And I've been in Facebook groups and trying to talk to people. And you see that people need to talk. And there's really nobody to talk to. I've been working on other books and other um, things that I'm working on. But in the meantime, I'm trying to figure out how to pave a way, how to help people. And I've noticed that people need an outlet. And Hey Raymond is a podcast that I decided to create because I really, really needed to talk to my brother about things that I was going through. And I've noticed that it was a way to be able to say things to other people through stories, through storytelling, and and deal with issues in a very sensitive, loving, and caring way that people could connect to. And it's funny, it's it's serious, it's healing and It was a way to be able to be reflective and, you know, just get to the meat of it. Listen, things hurt, but we can heal and we can move forward. And so, hey, Raymond, I needed to talk to him. He's not here anymore, 
but I can still use what we went through to get through and move very forward in a, in a really great way. Well, you know, it's interesting when you talk about having a need to talk and this is just something that I experience in my own life. Um, you know, how many times are you having a conversation with someone where you're explaining something or you're talking about something and before you can fully divulge everything that you want to communicate, they interrupt and it could be because there's a similar experience that they want to share that they relate to, or they might have a question or some perspective that they're afraid that they might forget what they want to say. So they jump in, but communication involves active listening. And, and I noticed that in a lot of interviews, you know, when you're sitting there and you're listening to the interview and the person who is being interviewed is, is just giving you all these gems and all this wisdom. And then, you know, the person that's doing the interview will cut them off. And I'm like, why did you stop them? Because they had something that I wanted to hear and you didn't give them the opportunity to say it. So I just want to underscore the fact that it's just so important that sometimes when people have something to say, you need to give them an opportunity to say what they have to say and then, you know, come back and ask the question or share your experience. So I'm just wondering about the format of your podcast. Is this something where you're just offering those stories that you were telling or are you having conversations with others and giving them the opportunity to tell their story? Well, my goal, honestly, is the first thing is, is I don't want people initially when I was when I was really kind of working through the process of what it's going to look like, I got the impression that people thought this was going to be a, a funeral procession, that we were going to sit there and just um, talk about our loved ones who had passed on and that we were just going to go, Oh, I, I miss them so much. And I was like, no, this is where we're going to, we're going to work through things where we go and say, my grandma would have told me this and how to deal with a solution. Again, I'm a solution-based thing. Don't bring me a problem if you don't have a way to, to figure out how to get through this. So yes, I really want to start bringing people in. My goal is to maybe have a two to one ratio where it's me maybe a couple times and then someone else. But I want to make sure that we are dealing with the solution, but also understanding, like if you listen to the first podcast and and the podcast is always going to be a story, a quote. I love quotes. Oh my God. Because everyone has something to say and where there's a story because there's always a story. You know, Vince, you know, think about it. Every time you you listen to a great speech, they start with a story, right? I mean, they start with a quote or when, when you go to a, even a, um, you listen to a, a pastor, they start with a quote. Everybody starts with a quote, right? And so you weave that in. But then there's, hey, I'm a motivational speaker. Listen, what are we going to do? It's a solution. I'm not going to leave people with just this fuzzy feeling. How are we going to manage this? If we're talking that day about dealing with, um, for lack of a better word, just dealing with depression, what are we going to do? We're going to make some soup. We're going to, you know, figure out how to get out the house that day. We're going to do this. And then we're going to realize sometimes we get sad every time in every situation. There's going to be the fact that something's not going to work, you know, because we always leave these things with being empowered. Well, sometimes things don't work. And I want people to just understand that sometimes things don't work and that's okay. Okay. So, um, Raymond, obviously he was someone that you had a great deal of affection for, and you must have had a really special relationship if after his transition, you are still compelled to have conversations with him. Could you talk about your relationship with your brother and why it is so meaningful to you? Raymond was, not only was he brilliant, he was the weirdest, silliest, funniest, most easiest person I've ever met in my life. And he could just weave his way into every situation. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell what's going to sound like the saddest story in the world, but it's, it's really, in my opinion, the funniest story. At his funeral, 
we found out that Raymond was a member of the Mensa Club. Who knew that, right? Um, and you, as you're familiar, Mensa is this um, brilliant society that you have to have a certain kind of IQ to, to um, become a member of. You have to take all these tests. Nobody knew that. People were, there, there was this group of pool people. They were trying to put pool cues in his casket. There, he belonged to a bridge club. There was these group of people with bridge club. He belonged to some spades club. There, there were all these pockets of people that he belonged to and we're just like all popped up. And it was just the funniest thing. And the, the funeral lasted forever, like hours because people wanted to speak. And for me, that just, it, it just showed what kind of human being this boy was. And he was only 25, you know, and he just was so lovely. And I mean, he was a pain. I mean, he was absolutely a pain, but he was my little brother. And what else could he be, right? That was his job. That was his obligated job to be a pain. But he was just the most wonderful person. And we would just tell stories. We had a very difficult life, to, to say the least. That's the nicest way to say it. But Raymond and I could have conversations for hours about absolutely nothing um, and make it into the most wonderful stories and the most wonderful ideas and that's how I learned how to just come up with things and out of nothing and he could take us everywhere he knew the bus system better than the drivers literally um, and he was just a really great guy I mean people loved him where's your brother where's your brother I'm right here okay yeah but where's Raymond um, so that's just and I just want to kind of tell stories and I'm sure the more I tell stories, the more people are going to pop up and say, hey, I knew him. I want to tell that story. And that's going to be great. But I want people to be able to tell stories about their loved ones, too. And um, that's what we're here for, is to be able to do that. Because people loved the people that they loved just as much as I um, loved him. And I, I really think, Vince, and I, I'm sure you'll agree with this, as long as someone's name is being said, their presence is still um, magnified throughout the universe, in my opinion. Absolutely. You know, that really speaks to the meaning of history. So as long as you speak the names of those who have come before you, they continue to exist. And it's when you stop speaking their names that they cease to exist and they, they fade into oblivion, and we definitely don't want that to happen with Raymond. We're going to talk more about this great podcast and other things that you're involved in when we return. You're listening to Open Door with Vince Robinson on 95.9 FM WOVU, Burton Car Community Radio. We'll be right back with our guest, Stephanie Ray Thompson, motivational speaker, solution-oriented motivational speaker, right after this message. Are you or someone you know in need of help? Here's a resource you can turn to. The Thea Bowman Center has been serving the community for over 50 years and provides services to help support Mount Pleasant and surrounding communities of all ages. Some of these programs include adult education like GED, computer classes, food pantry, senior outreach, youth after school, and summer programs, and much more. Are you a Cleveland resident in need of a GED preparation, a food pantry, youth or senior programs? Then call the Thea Bowman Center at 216-491-0669 or visit theabowmancenter.org. Call the Thea Bowman Center at 216-491-0669 or visit theabowmancenter.org to register today. This message is brought to you by the Thea Bowman Center and WOVU 95.9 FM, Our Voices United, a Burton Bell Car community radio station. Welcome back to Open Door with Vince Robinson. My guest this morning is solution oriented motivational speaker, Stephanie Ray Thompson. She has a podcast that is on Spotify. It's called, Hey Raymond, I need to talk. And uh, she's giving us all the information and the inside on why this podcast is up and what she wants to accomplish with it. She just talk, spoke of her brother who uh, apparently was an amazing individual, a member of Mensa, 
which means basically the bro was a genius. <laughs> At a very young age, he knew all the comings and goings of the city of Cleveland, the bus system and all of that, and was involved in some quite interesting things, as was evidenced by the length of his funeral. So you decided to uh, launch this podcast and you put it on Spotify. Uh, who are you looking to reach with your podcast? Honestly, I um, I put it out as a way to reach, honestly, everybody. I hate to say that I, I should have a target market. I want to reach people who are are honestly in in pain. Again, I'm a long hauler with COVID. I have a a group of people that I follow through that long haulers, and I'm watching them just descend into this pit of despair. And I really want people to understand that regardless of what we're going through, and it's horrific, and there's people out there suffering through lots of, even if it's economic, economic despair, mental despair, physical despair, there's so many things that we're suffering through, but we can, we can, we can make it. We can find a way to turn our hopes and dreams into actual beliefs that we are and what our R's are can change. Because if we believe that we are hopeless, then we will fall. But if we believe we are hopeful, we can become. And so I want to turn that around for people. And I know it has. I know it works because it's worked for me. I'm not out here selling, you know, I went from $10 an hour to $500,000. I'm not selling that. But I did go from knowing that I wasn't anything to knowing that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to be okay. I did go from feeling like I was worthless to knowing that I I can do this. I'm going to do this. I am doing this. And I'm going to show people that it doesn't take until you're 50 to figure it out. And so I want people, right? You know, Vince, I want people to understand that you don't have to do it by yourself. I'm going to help. I want to help. I don't want people to hurt. And I don't want you to have to work it out by yourself. So you've expressed that you are a long hauler. So that means that you've gone through an experience and I'm sure that there may be things that happened as you recovered and as you continue to recover. Can you talk about what helped you get through this process of, you know, having an illness and then doing what was necessary to pull yourself from the place of despair that you were probably in, just knowing that you had to go through the suffering that you went through? It's, it's only belief because every day um, is I, – I have a very bad neurological and nerve disorder right now. Um, and if I allowed myself to feel the way I genuinely feel um, physically, then I, I could just be under the bed in pain. I have to know and believe that – it's okay because I, I genuinely believe that our our endorphins, our our mental not that it will completely override and trump it, right? But I believe that when I eat the right foods, when I believe in myself that I can bring myself up enough to at least be functional. Right. Do I still hurt? Absolutely. Am I still uncomfortable? Yeah, a lot of the times. But. I'm a happy person. I'm a good person. I know that I have people that I can count on. And that makes a difference. Even if that person hasn't called me, I know I can call that person. They got stuff to do. And I want people to be able to connect these dots and I'm here to at least draw the dotted lines for them. I can't draw that line for you, Vince, 
but I can show you where your pencil is. I can help you say, hey, Vince, did you turn left? Can you just look a little bit that way? Because when you're in pain, maybe you're not thinking to look that way. So I can say, hey, look that way. And you go, oh, yeah, I forgot. And that's what that's what Hey Raymond does. Hey Raymond says, what would your grandma say? Your grandma might say, turn and look that way. I want to help you remember the stories that your grandma would say to you. I want to help you remember the stories that your friend in college, that the stuff you guys used to do. Remember the stories that made you happy. Go watch the movie, right, that made you feel good and carry that feeling with you and move forward. Because you can do it. You can do it. But if you don't do it, no one can do that for you. Right. So um, I'm just reading the description of your podcast on, on Spotify, and I'm just thinking in this moment about the whole idea of grief. I mean, obviously, you, you went through grief back in 1996 when, when your brother made his transition, and now we're living in a time when it seems that people are transitioning at a much younger age. You know, I read a, a statistic the other day that said that people – uh, between the ages of 18 and 65 have seen a 40% increase in death. And I'm sure that there are a number of factors that are involved in this. And part of it is a rabbit hole that we can't go down on the air right now. But what we can talk about is the necessity to assist people through a grieving process. You know, I just happen to be one of those folks who, you know, this is just me talking. So, you know, don't don't take it any further than it needs to go. But I'm just one of those people who who sees that, you know, when people come to the end of a physical life, they continue in a spiritual sense. That's not the end of them. It's just the end of them in that particular body. And sometimes it's really hard for us to let go of the idea of that person in that body. So we see that transition as the end of them forever. And, you know, we'll never have any further connection with them. You know, their history, you know, there's no more of them for us, you know, but then on the other hand, you have conversations with people who have said, well, you know, I, I saw my mother in a dream or I saw my father in a dream or, you know, have some folks who will actually go to a medium and they'll have things shared with them that's coming from that person who has transitioned. So the end is not necessarily the end in, in the minds of some, the end is just a new beginning. So those of us who embrace that idea of the new beginning may not feel <laughs> as sadly as folks who just see that as the end, no more. Uh, and they have to go through some type of process to, to get relief from their grief. Otherwise it will just continue to eat away at them, uh, not to belabor the point, but I can remember a conversation that I had uh, with one of my mentors, Dr. James Brown, and he tells this story about how there were two women and both of them uh, had their husbands transition uh, in a relatively short period of time. Uh, one of them, one of the, the wives had a husband that loved her dearly made sure that she had everything that she would need, you know, probably had a decent life insurance policy and everything. Uh, so when he transitioned, she was taken care of, she was good and she didn't experience a whole lot of discomfort. But on the other hand, the other woman who uh, had the transition of her husband just took it so hard. It was only a matter of time before she transitioned to, and it had a lot to do with the way that they perceived that situation. So I said all that to say that your attitude towards the event that you're navigating can have a tremendous impact on how you navigate further forward successfully, or it could lead you into a place of despair and, and depression, which would not be a good thing. I just wondered if you had any thoughts about that. Well, I agree wholeheartedly. And, and and let's be honest, those are real and true issues. But let's look at grief, man. Does it only deal with 
you you call it transition, but grief on the scale can be losing a job you loved very much. Grief can be that boyfriend, even if it was just six months, if you were deeply invested, we, we grieve over and over and over and over again. And a lot of us don't let it go. And that's why we're so scarred and burdened by the time we're 35, 40, 50, that we're unfit for relationships because we've got all this grief um, built up in us, be it because we've lost loved ones from, as you call it, transitions. And then we've, we've lost loved ones from relationships and we've lost, and we're so scared of losing things now that we don't want to get into anything because we, we don't, we're scared to lose something now. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. And if we don't learn how to deal with grief and we don't learn how to deal with, you know, being okay with ourselves and understanding the way that we handle it and the way that, that, that we accept that we are, we are, we, we might have some trauma there, then we can't healthily get into any other things. And no wonder by the time, you know, we're middle-aged, which is funny because I don't feel middle-aged, but by the time, yeah, we're middle-aged, no wonder some of us are absolutely unfit for relationships because we haven't let go of those other things. So I agree with you in that. And you're right. Some of us have learned how to either let go or say, wow, yeah, this is, this is what happens naturally. And that's, that's okay. And I'll be, you know, glad when I'm rejoined with that person. And some people are just filled with anger or so much hurt that yes. And that leads, let's be honest, I've watched you and I've listened to you. Um, that leads to health issues, right? That leads to a lot, which can lead to an early transition, as you call it, early death. That leads to um, anger issues. That leads to mental and um, emotional decline, which again can lead to an early um, transition and death. So we have to learn how to be able to deal with this. And while I'm not a, a counselor and a therapist, which people really should be looking into, sometimes talking it out can make a huge difference just getting that out sometimes a good cry is what you need there's nothing wrong with that well from the words of stephanie ray thompson if you've experienced trauma grief or pain and want to know how to have a positive outlook on life beyond the mess that you're living through this show is for you Stephanie Ray Thompson, it has been an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you. I want to invite folks to uh, go to Spotify. There's a free version and there's a premium version. If you pay for the premium version, you won't have to listen to commercials. If you're cheap like some folks, you just get the free version. But either way, tune in to Spotify and check out her podcast. It's called Hey Raymond, I Need to Talk. Thanks for joining us on Open Door with Vince Robinson. Thank you so much for having me, Vince. I sincerely appreciate this opportunity. I am also on iHeartRadio, Google Music, and Amazon Music. Thank you again, and I look forward to talking with you soon. W-O-V-U, Burton Del Car Community Radio. W-O-V-U, 95.9 FM LP is a community radio station that is an enterprise of Burton Bell Car Development Incorporated, BBC, the nonprofit community development corporation serving the greater Cleveland community through the terrestrial frequency of 95.9 FM. WOVU provides a vehicle to connect people to valuable information and resources through on-air broadcasting and associated social media platforms. WOVU addresses the concerns of the urban community with solutions-driven information that allows us to showcase Northeast Ohio talent and positive urban music not typically found on mainstream radio. We operate with the model that people support what they help create. 
and WOVU. Our Voices United provides exciting and creative ways to engage, involve, and uplift the community. Welcome back to Open Door with Vince Robinson. My guest is Jesse Ruffin, Jr. He's chairman of the Carolyn's Law Petition Committee. His wife, Carolyn, was involved in an incident that precipitated his pursuing a law. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, tell us about why you created this idea of pursuing this law and what it's all about. So welcome to Open Door, Mr. Ruffin. Well, Thank you, and good morning to you, and I really appreciate this opportunity to come and speak on this important issue to you and your listeners. Okay. So tell us, uh, what uh, was the impetus beside behind your uh, initiative or your initiating the idea of Carolyn's Law? Well, I'm glad you asked, because Carolyn and I was married for about 44 years, and she had to have a brain tumor. The operation was successful and she went into a nursing home for the purpose of rehabilitation. And sometime shortly after she went into the nursing home, uh, she fell on her head after having brain surgery. And we had to remove her from that facility. And for three and a half years, she was in and out of nursing homes uh, trying to look for better service, and I come to find out that the basic problem that we had in all nursing homes that we visited was nurse-patient ratios, where nurses and nurse aides were trying to take care of as many as 20 to 25 and sometimes 30 patients in a 12-hour shift. And so based on that situation, I made arrangements to stay with my wife every single night. So I basically was there as her caregiver uh, at each and every facility that she was in. And I was able to meet and learn what was going on and how the nurses and nurse aides were suffering trying to maintain that status. And I believe hardly, I really believe that um, because of that type of situation, of having so many patients that a lot of times a patient just can't get the attention that they really need. And I promised my wife and also uh, that some of the nurses and nurse aides that were very sincere and dedicated to this field that uh, we would try and do something about it. And that's where the Carolyn's Law Petition Drive had uh, started from. Okay. Well, it's it's commendable that you would take things to the next level. I mean, obviously, your wife transitioned quite a, 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 a while ago, and you could have just gone through a grieving process and then moved forward with your life, but you decided that uh, you wanted to do something about it so that others would not have to go through what you've been through. You've also identified the fact that uh, based on your perception, uh, there are people who are in uh, nursing facilities who are not getting the care that they should. Uh, for whatever reason, there's a deficit in uh, the interaction between the clients and their staff. Uh, can you talk about what you witnessed, uh, what you saw as you were in that caregiver mode? Well, basically, I saw where nurses were trying to take care of too many patients. And the bottom line is that when you have 30 or more patients in a 12-hour shift, they can only give them so much attention, and they have to move on. And that's where a lot of accidents and injuries occur. And from that experience, that's what propped us to move forward in trying to do something that would uh, not only help those uh, patients that didn't have a voice. There were a lot of people that were there and didn't have a voice. And then it would also help these nurses and nurse aides to deal with that because some of them were suffering from, I mean, actually having stressful situations and almost having nervous breakdown crying sometimes. I've actually prayed with some of the nurses some of the, you know, nights 
it just was a, a it was an experience and i believe that god allows you to experience certain things for a purpose and obviously you know with my wife he got my attention so this is why we're working toward getting this petition passed for november of this year okay so I'm just going to read from your website because it really clearly defines exactly what you want to do. Uh, and I'm going to give folks an opportunity to get involved because you want them to support the petition. But the purpose of the petition is to establish a proposed constitutional amendment by initiative for the state of Ohio to pass legislation that will provide safe staffing measures to implement mandatory nurse to patient ratios of one nurse and one state tested nurse aid with eight to 10 patients in long-term care facilities and one nurse and one state tested nurse aid with five to six patients in skilled nursing homes from the current average of 20 to 25 patients per nurse and state tested nurse aid per shift for a, for a nurse, to have 20 to 25 people to be responsible for in a day, as you said, has to be quite frustrating for them because they have to know. And I'm sure that they, they know quite well that that's a bit much for them. And, and I can also kind of think or, or imagine that, uh, you know, facilities are also consumed with the cost of personnel and, you know, paying for human resources is, is, is normally in, in, in customarily one of the highest costs that operations have. So it's a, it's a situation where you got a staff, but the staff is spread too thin. Uh, I'm just wondering from your perspective, how will uh, facilities address the, the financial aspect of being staffed properly? Well, you know, that's an interesting question, and a lot of people have asked that question. The question that I ask is, are we getting our money's worth right now, first of all? Second of all, we can take funds and we can supply other countries. We can supply all these different uh, programs for uh, individuals coming into this country and do things for everybody else. And I have no problem with that. But we need to take care of home first. And these people that are in these nursing homes are mostly uh, senior citizens. We have young folks as well. But these are people, we're standing on their shoulders who brought this country to where we are now. And we need to be available to help them. Absolutely. So, uh, for those who are listening, how can they get involved? Well, there are several ways that they can get involved. Your listeners can get involved. Obviously, you can go to carolynslaw.org, which is C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-S-L-A-W dot O-R-G. We have the website that has events and calendars so that they know what we're doing, where we are, and what we, you know, how they can get involved. Also, we have uh, an office located right here in the uh, Maple Heights area at 17027 Libby Road, Unit 2 in Maple Heights, Ohio. And the uh, area code is, uh, zip code rather, is 44137. The uh, business telephone number, if they want to call, is 216 8 Two five three nine zero zero. The cell phone number is two one six seven zero one twenty three hundred, and they can also email us at petition at carolynslaw dot org. That's p e t i t i o n at carolynslaw dot org. Okay. And where are you in the process right now? What 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 is the process moving forward in order to get this this uh, proposed law enacted, if it can be created? Right now, we have been certified by the Attorney General on June thirtieth of last year. We were also approved by the Ohio Ballot Board on July twelfth uh, of last year 
And in August, once we prepared the new documentations based on their uh, advice, we started collecting signatures. And we have to collect 450,000 signatures in all 88 counties. And there's a basically we have a formula, and it's very simple. All we really need is a minimum of 25 persons per county to dedicate themselves to bring in 600 signatures, which could be done simply by obtaining 10 signatures a day for 60 days or 20 signatures per day for 30 days. When you calculate 88 counties with 25 persons minimum in it, that comes out to be about 2,020 individuals in the state of Ohio. And if they would do that, we could have 1.3 million signatures. Okay. So and that can be done basically in 60 days. All right. So where are you now in, in terms of a count? Well, let's just say we're about at the 45-yard line right now. Okay. And we're working towards completing uh, the signatures by the end of June of this year so that they could be submitted 120 days prior to November 8 in order to qualify to be on the ballot. Okay. So uh, we've identified how you, as a person listening to this program, can become involved. If you want more information, you can go to carolynslaw.org. That's C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-S-L-A-W dot O-R-G, carolynslaw.org. And you can get involved at a very minimum by signing a petition, or you can be someone who volunteers to get others to sign for this very important cause. Jesse Ruffin, Jr., Chairman of the Carolyn's Law Petition Committee, we wish you nothing but success in your endeavor to make nursing homes a better place for those who are there, but also to make nursing homes a better place for the nurses that staff those facilities. It's definitely a worthy cause. Again, much success to you, and hopefully come November we'll be looking at some legislation. Thanks for joining me on Open Door. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. God bless you. We'll be back with more Open Door with Vince Robinson right after these messages. Right here on 95.9 FM, WOVU. WOVU 95.9 FM, we are here for the community. It's called Our Voices United. We are united to give you all the information from sports, music, gospel, mental health, financial literacy, anything that you need, we got to hear at WOVU 95.9 FM. Don't forget to download our app right now. Go to your mobile app store, download WOVU. Put it on your phone. This is one of the reasons why you need to listen to us. We are the community. We're for the community. I am your music director, DJ Chris Tiles. And thank you for listening to WOVU 95.9 FM. Welcome back to Open Door with Vince Robinson. My guest is now Wendell Fields. He's the executive director and lead commissioner of B Buzz Baseball. Wendell, welcome to Open Door. Thank you, Vince. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, allow me to speak. Okay, so I'm sitting here looking at the 2022 B Buzz Baseball League schedule. For those who don't know, what is B Buzz Baseball? So B-Buzz Baseball is, I always say it's a collaborative effort of alumni members who have come back, who once played in B-Buzz. B-Buzz started in 1958. So we've got quite a number of uh, people who have gone up, grown up playing in this league. During the 80s, it died down. And in 19, oh, excuse me, 2014, a group of alumni got together and decided to reactivate the league. And in doing so, uh, we started with very low numbers, 20 kids. Um, today, we're over 150 kids. And in doing so as well, we realized that baseball was not the only thing that our kids needed was more activities, but they also needed to be able to strengthen their um, growth as a person. And so we brought on several uh, 
agencies to help our children and to incorporate resources within them. So they still have fun playing baseball, but they get a chance to improve them, their self-esteem. They learn uh, financial literacy. They are in the summer reading program. They have uh, an anti-bullying program that they're a part of. And it just really brings the whole child together. Yeah, it's really interesting that, that you say that, you know, because you're you're talking about baseball in a time where we're not really participating in baseball at the same levels that we did in the past. I mean, if you right. look at the, uh, you know, if you look at professional baseball leagues, you don't see as many brothers playing baseball as you did. And part of it probably has to do with the fact that, you know, in order for you to play, you got to have a field. The field has to be maintained. You know, and when they cut back, you know, especially when it comes to education, the things that usually go first are the arts and then secondarily, you know, the the athletics suffer to an extent. So the fact that you are taking it upon yourself to provide these opportunities for young people, not just to play a sport, but also to have other things uh, incorporated into the program, like the financial literacy, which is so important in this day and time. Very much. Uh, very it, much. It's really commendable that you would take on this undertaking. Thank you. It, it, you. You know, you nailed it on the head. That's exactly my thought process. I knew that for me, baseball's never left my life. So I might be one of the few. <laughs> I never made it to the major league level, but I've never missed a summer playing organized baseball either since I was nine years old. So I play softball, which is to steal the same game. It's for us older guys. It taught me value less that I, on a daily basis as I was growing up and realized that I was learning them, you know, how to work with other people. You need nine players on a team. I don't have to like all nine, but I need all nine to, to complete the game. Um, the discipline that it has, the sportsmanship, the tolerance, patience. There's so many things within the game of baseball that we all take in, 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 in real life on a daily basis. And you're right. Back in the day, in the 80s, when the league died down and Mother Nature took over because there was no activities on the field, the conditions became really bad. And so if you go around Cleveland and you look at these diamonds that once were thriving, and in our day and age, um, I know in the 70s, I grew up playing in 70, probably the whole from 73 to about 80. Um, we had ball fields. They were well maintained. Um, but, you know, they kept the grass cut. They, they were the, there were no boulders or rocks on the diamonds. There were no uh, dirt bike tracks all over them and things of that nature. And so we are now uh, our board of directors has really taken a step to really enhance what our future looks like moving forward. Um, it's funny you, you, that we're having this interview today because I literally just got off a Zoom call with uh, City of Cleveland Councilman Joe Jones, um, our construction team that is in place as far as a builder, construction guy, and, and the architect to put all this together. I've also was on with the Cleveland Guardians, uh, the Trust of Public Land, and quite a number of B-Buzz uh, board members and everybody joined in together for the same positive impact of putting new AstroTurf diamonds at Carouge Park. We realize there's going to be a process and it has to go through the proper channels. But so far, everything looks good that we will be moving forward with um, giving the kids in a really nice place to play for years to come moving forward and that will in turn bring out more kids in the community it'll bring out the actual community itself to be involved and i'm just really excited about where our league is going moving forward okay you mentioned that the guardians and you also mentioned uh cleveland city councilman joe jones and i'm assuming that they are partners in what you're doing because they're stepping forward yes. to provide some some physical relief uh, but you also mentioned those those program components. I'm just wondering who some of your partners are uh, with respect to uh, mentoring and uh, cultivating the, the young players. Sure, sure. So Al Grimes of the Fatherhood Initiative Program is, is a really huge supporter of ours. And he normally puts on one or two uh, father events throughout the summer 
Um, we normally have a Father's Day game of catch. I think this year we're doing it down at League Park. So we're going to incorporate the history of Cleveland baseball along with being fathers out playing catch with dad. Um, we also have big brothers and big sisters on board who will supply the mentoring of kids who, who really need that gap filled in for them. Um, the Phoebe Foundation teaches the financial literacy aspect. And to me, that's really very, very important because that's something that we didn't learn growing up. Um, I didn't learn how to balance a checkbook until I bounced checks in college. And my mother may, may got mad at me for bouncing checks. But that's something that's real important to our kids these days. Um, Cleveland Public Library has the summer reading program. And then Ben Hobart, mayor of Warren, a mayor of Woodmere, actually put together an anti-bullying program. And so with all those things combined, it really gives kids avenues that will help develop them into uh, superior citizens, as we like to call it, um, as our model, our mission statement actually says. Okay. So you've got support from all these various entities. Uh, there may be people in our listening audience who want to provide some type of support. So how can listeners support what you're doing with B-Buzz Baseball? Um, we have a, a website, bbuzzbaseball.org. There's a sponsorship page. And it explains all the various ways that people can sponsor. Um, we have this year, um, probably I added an additional 15 new sponsors. Um, and I know that because we provide a sponsor sign. The, the, whoever sponsors us, if they um, reach a certain level, they get a field sign put up at the Diamonds. And I literally ordered 19 new field signs uh, yesterday. So we have quite a number of people. Uh, who are joined us in doing that. But our website kind of explains everything. Um, also, with the Guardians in place, our registration process has made it a lot easier for people. Um, we are now on the Major League Baseball platform where you simply go to our website, click on it, and register your child, and everything is digital now. And it really makes my life a lot easier, but I'm able to communicate on a better uh, basis with all parents, I'm able to move kids from team to team, coaches around, and, and just enhance our way of communicating with parents. And they're able to share their input as well because there's a, a page so parents can leave comments. They can, you know, leave questions, and everything can be answered in real time. Um, and so uh, that's something that I'm really happy about this year and excited to use. Um, the service is called League Apps, and, again, that's one of our new sponsors. Okay. So it's the B-Buzz Baseball League. Uh, the schedule is posted on the website, I'm sure. The uh, Player yes. Pro Day is on May 7th, and it looks like yes. the uh, opening day is on May 28th. Thankfully, you yes. didn't have it on the 1st of April because you probably would have been looking at a few full of snow. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> but, no it's, been, it's been Memorial Weekend ever since we came back, and it's, it's a great weekend because it, it's, it still gives people wanting to come out um, we have quite a number of successful alumni members. Uh, John Barnes Jr., who was the former state representative of Ohio. Uh, we have Brad Sellers, who's the mayor of Warrensville. We have Ben Hobart, who's the mayor of Woodmere Village. Uh, Zach Reed, um, who is now on the city uh, mayor's council. And there's Joe Jones, who is current councilman. And so those guys come out and share their experiences with B-Buzz, about B-Buzz, about their days in B-Buzz. And it kind of gives the parents a, a sense and the kids a sense that, you know, there are average people who have gone on and didn't play sports in a professional level, but they took their profession to a higher level okay. by being and learning what they learned throughout B-Buzz. Um, and then it turns out on, on Memorial Day, this is the first year that we were able to do this because of COVID and some things slowed it down. But normally our kids don't get their uniforms prior to Warrensville Heights Memorial Day Parade. This year we're two days ahead of that. So all the kids will be in their uniforms and I'm so happy that they'll get to walk around, walk through the, the Warrensville Parade. So thank you to Warrensville Heights. We really appreciate you allowing us to be in your parade once again. And, and now that COVID is slowing down and people are getting some back to being a little normal, um, that's one of the things that is going to 
bring us out back into the community. Okay. Well, Wendell Fields, I appreciate you stopping by Open Door to give us all the insight on B-Buzz Baseball, and we'll look forward to that opening pitch on May 20, 28th. Wendell Fields, yes. Executive Director and Lead Commissioner of B-Buzz Baseball, thanks for joining us on Open Door, and thank you to you, the listening audience, for tuning in. As always, know yourself, love yourself, be yourself, and make today your best day. Peace.